morning. I am Dr. Avlokita Agrawal and this is the course on architectural graphics or engineering graphics where we are going to learn about orthographic projections. So in the second lecture of this course, we are going to learn about the different tools uh, and instruments that we are going to be using for making these drawings by hand. So though most of us have already shifted to computers, but before we move on to computers, we have to understand the basics of how uh, the drawing would be done in uh, on sheet and by hand. So that is what we are going to learn and in this lecture I am going to show you what are the different tools and stationary items that you need to procure. So now I am going to tell you what are the different instruments and tools that you will be needing for architectural drawing or engineering drawing. Uh, not necessary that you would need all these instruments at all the times, but at some point of time you might just need it. So to start with, we will first start with the very basic uh, tools that you would be needing. So these are these pencils. You must have these hard uh, wooden pencils that uh, we have. And why do we have so many different pencils? So we have pencils from grade 4H to 8B. So if you ever pick up a pencil, you can see that there is a grade written in the bottom which is this one says 4H and then you can you can find out find the pencils with a grade of 3H and 2H, H and then we have an HB and from HB then the grade starts increasing towards the B. So we have 2B, 3B, 4B, 5B, 6B and 8B. Now what is this, what does this H and B mean that you have to understand. So the pencils which have an H means they have a hard lead. So they will be very light uh, when you draw with them. So you can actually make very, you can apply a lot of pressure, but it will still give you a very light uh, colored line. So it is a hard pencil. While if you look at this 8B pencil, it is a very soft pencil and it is black. So B stands for black. So the darker is the grade. 8B is darkest, but it is also the softest. So we use it very rarely in uh, engineering graphics. HB, which is the one which is most commonly used, is a balance of hardness and black. So uh, it is quite convenient, comfortable to use and we would have when we are drawing, we would have the grades starting from this 4H to uh, 8B. Though some of the pencils we would use lesser, less often and some we would use more often. But we would have this entire range of pencils with us as a stationary kit. Okay, Then we would need an eraser because we are working with pencils. Though when we are drawing we should ideally use the eraser least. We should not be using the eraser. So you should be drawing very carefully because more we erase using the eraser the dirtier, messier your sheets would become. And the sheets, uh, though they are not fancy, they, they do not have colors and rendering and painting, but still the graphics itself should be very balanced and composed and we should be needing this eraser much lesser. Uh, what you would need along with that is not a sharpener, not the regular sharpener that uh, most of us would have used in the school, but we would actually use a paper cutter to sharpen our pencils. And that is what uh, we would be uh, using. I would show you how you actually sharpen the pencil. So we do not sharpen using the sharpener because when we sharpen using the sharpener, it also uh, moves along with this lead and the lead becomes little soft and powdery. So it leaves those you know powdery marks and that is what we do not want. So we would always sharpen our pencils using a paper cutter that is the best. So we have these pencils, eraser and sharpener. Uh, then along with that you would always be needing these two different types of tapes. So one is a cello tape which like is commonly known, known as a cello tape. It is a transparent tape and we also have a magic uh, translucent tape. So we would be having one roll of uh, each uh, one of these. Uh, then along with that you should always have at least a duster to dust your sheet 
and keep your uh, instruments clean. You would be needing a simple scale, uh, a foot long scale, the 30 centimeter scale. And uh, when you select a scale, you should be checking if it has an inking edge or not. So, uh, scales sometimes would come with an inking edge. Now, uh, I should tell you what an inking edge is uh, with some other. So, if you if you check uh, the, uh, so this is the set square, you have used the set squares, this one in schools definitely for your uh, maths, mensuration and geometry. Uh, these are the bigger ones which we use. Now, as far as we are going with pencils on architectural graphics sheets, uh, you would not need an inking edge. But the moment you are working with point and ink, pen and ink, you would need an inking edge. So, what inking edge is? If you, if you uh, move your nails along the edge like this, so you would see that there is an edge inside. You can't really see it, but you can feel it. So, every time the ink blots, the inking edge which is slightly depressed will hold that ink and the ink would not spread on your sheet. It will not blot the entire sheet. So, the next, so bes uh, besides scales, you would have two uh, uh, set square. One is the 45-45 and the other one is this 30-60 set square which uh, we would be needing. Uh, and we also have a protractor. So, this one is used for making the angular lines. So, we would need a protractor also. We also have this adjustable set square which is an interesting combination of both uh, set squares and protractor. So, you can, so if you look at it in this closed way, it is actually a 45-45 set square. This is the protractor that I am talking about. So, you can actually fix it to some angles. So, I have just fixed it to 3060 that you can see. So, it is 3060 here. So, if you keep it like this, so this is actually the 60 edge and this is the 30 edge. So, this adjustable set square can be adjusted to any angle. You can adjust it to any angle, but in its closed form, it, it will remain to be a 45-45 uh, set square and this one is quite handy because you, you, you can use it for any uh, angle unlike these ones which are fixed. So, we have this adjustable set square, okay, you have the scissors which you will need anyway. Uh, besides this, we have this French curves. So, most of the times when we are uh, talking about the engineering graphics, you uh, go for curves like circles and ellipses. But when you are designing buildings, sometimes the fancy buildings, um, I'm sure you must have seen a lot of buildings, for example, uh, the Sydney Opera House and many others where, you know, different shapes of curves have been used and we will be talking about different curves. In for such curves, sometimes it is not possible to make them with the help of a compass or they are not uh, fixed, they cannot be determined, especially when you are making them by hand. In such cases, we would need these French curves. So, this is a set of 12 curves. So, this, there are 12 curves in that, they are numbered. And then what you have to do, it is basically hit and trial. So, you have any three points that have to be joined with the help of a curve. So, you just make these, uh, put this these curves and it could be any one of these which will be used and as you practice more, you understand that uh, which curve would fit in, uh, in the given circumstances, in the given points. So, you put these curves, uh, French curves, any one of these and then you make the curve as desired. So, this is French curve that you would be needing. Now, these are all the supporting ones. Another thing that you would be needing in the, is this scale. So, it is not the ruler as I said which I uh, wrongly use the word scale, it is actually the ruler. This is the scale. So, basically when we talk about scaling or dimensioning the drawing, so when we start talking about the scaling or dimensioning of drawings that is when we would need the scale. So, this one if you see uh, reads 1 is to 25 or 1 is to 250. So, instead of calculating that what would a 10 meter mean on a 1 is to 25 scale, we could simply look at this and we can we can 
actually select the scale and make the drawing directly. So it is to help you scale the drawing and you would need it quite often when you are doing the architectural drawing. So this scale uh, comes handy and it has uh, multiple scales I think it has six in total and the most frequently used ones are 1 is 250 and 1 is 200. So that is what you would be needing most uh, often. Uh, in addition to that you would actually be using the main drafting equipment. We use two drafting equipments commonly. So if you are working with a smaller board, the half size board, this one is an A0 board. The one which is in view is, a, is an A0 board with a stand. So you might be having a board with a stand. This is a full size board. For a full size board, you would always be needing a T-pulley. So a T-pulley, I will show you how you work with a T-pulley, but a T-pulley actually has these four or two pulleys. Uh, so in case it is four, you have two pulleys on each side. In case it is two pulleys, so you will basically have one pulley on each side and you pass a thread over it. So on the board, the T-pulley the actually moves in parallel. It continues to remain parallel and it moves and I will show you how to fix that. So for bigger drawings, especially for architectural drawings, we use this or if you are using a smaller board, you may also be needing and some of you who have already studied the subjects might be familiar with this. This is a mini drafter. There are bigger drafters, so which are exactly the same si same shape, same fundamental, but they are bigger. So uh, we could use uh, this mini drafter if we are working on smaller boards and smaller size sheets, half size sheets or we could be using the T-pulley. I would show you using the T-pulley. You could also see there are a lot of uh, tutorials available on how to use the mini drafters as well but the fundamentals remain the same. You would also be needing board pins especially when we are working with the pulleys uh, to fix up the sheets. So we would be using the board pins. These are the flat head, bo head bo uh, board pins which are made of brass. So you can use these ones instead of the very small uh, you know lifted headed uh, pins, board pins. So buy a pack of these board pins uh, as well. And the most important thing of all of these is these sheets. So we will be using the cartridge sheets. Now if you uh, look at the cartridge sheet, if you have handled the cartridge sheet, you would know that cartridge sheet has two sides to it. One is a rough side and the other one is a fine side. So on the fine side, if you want to draw thinner uh, drawing, especially engineering drawing where a fine line is required and uh, you know finesse is required, you would go for the thin side and uh, for sketching and painting the freehand things, you would use the rough side. So for all this, this entire course, I would suggest that you prefer to use the, uh, the smooth side of the sheet though you can always try making drawings on both the sides and see which one works for you. Some people make uh, you know little bold drawings which are thicker and uh, some people prefer to use thinner lines but uh, when whatever mm, you know we are using thicker lines or thinner lines consistently other lines will have to be shifting. We would always keep a butter sheet along and that is to save our sheet from dirtying and messing. So, so that is what we are going to be uh, using. Now before uh, we start uh, understanding how to use steeply and or mini drafter, I would first show you how do you actually sharpen your, uh, sharpen your pencils which is essential. So I am going to show you sharpening an HB pencil. So just keep a rough piece of paper where you do it and approximately one inch you mark on your pencil. So if you can see I have already marked this and then with a very light hand you start to chisel off the pencil especially towards the head of it and if you see we are not doing it like one uh, in one go it has to be done simply. thin uh, 
pieces of wood should come out and as we go continuously we have to reduce the length of this wood chiseling and restrict it only to the top of the pencil where as you can see this lead is gradually coming out So what we have to attempt doing is we have to make this wooden part absolutely smooth. So if you look at this part it is absolutely smooth and this is uh, what we require so that the pressure when you are using the pencil the pressure from your hand on the pencil is uniform. So there is no deviation of pressure when you are moving the pencil and when we move when we actually draw we actually move the pencil we rotate the pencil like this so that we get a uniform thickness once we have done this much we will start to chisel the pencil I am if you see closely I am continuously rotating the pencil as I start to chisel it and if you continuously do this you will actually be reaching a very fine point pencil and uh, always we should make it a habit when we are drawing using these hardwood pencils to be drawing using a fine pencil and not not a thick pencil that should be like a rule of drawing so if you see this and you should try not holding your pencil with your hands so that it doesn't dirty your hands and your sheets remain clean so if you see this this is far better and it stays longer if you have a point like this unlike these ones which have been done so these come from the market if I have to suggest you if I have to use it I will chisel, chisel it uh, with the help of this paper cutter and I will actually chisel it to give it this shape so that my pencil my point is actually very fine and every time so one more thing which I have actually missed out is a uh, sandpaper so you have to get a very fine grade sandpaper the zero grade uh, sandpaper and every time assuming this is the sandpaper every time your pencil becomes little uh, thick so you just have to rub it on the sandpaper like this keep rotating it rubbing it and then you have to clean the pencil using this so that there is no lead which deposits on this wooden part because if it is there then once you hold it your hands will become dirty so that's one habit that you should have the other habit that you should always have have is that you should keep cleaning your hands you should never have lead in your uh, uh, in your hands otherwise all that lead that dirt will get transferred onto your sheet and you will not be able to maintain a clean a uh, clean sheet so that's another thing so you uh, I hope you will be able to procure these uh, pencils and you will be able to chisel it you will be uh, required to chisel all of uh, these pencils and keep them ready before you start another thing that you, you can do because pens come with a cap pencils don't so for for keeping your pencils in shape when you go to the class uh, if you if you go to the college okay in this uh, times of corona maybe it's little unlikely but if you start going to the colleges you will actually have to be prepared before your class and for that what you can actually do is you can actually prepare uh, so you can actually prepare the pencil caps like this and all that you have to do is to keep your pencils in these caps so prepare them at home in advance and keep these pencils ready so whenever you go to the class you just have to pull them out and it stays much safer and it it is quite handy so you keep them back 
that is what you should be doing another thing another practice that you should uh, you should inculcate when you are going to become an engineer or an architect and you're going to draw is to keep your stationery keep your tools clean and that is why i always say that i insist upon that you should have these dusters and in addition to these dusters you should have spirit you know uh, which is like nail polish remover or some little spirit so a small bottle of spirit you should keep just dip your cloth in the spirit and after every use it doesn't take much time it just takes two minutes three minutes dip your cloth in spirit and clean the edges of the equipment the uh, instrument that you're using so whatever instrument you're using just clean the edges because these instruments they pick up the lead dust so if you can see there is a lot of lead dust which is already there and if you don't clean your uh, uh, instruments frequently you will actually be dirtying your entire sheet and that is what you should not do so these dusters should be maintained should be cleaned and you should actually not be messing dirtying your sheets your sheets are like a treasure which you should maintain for yourself as a portfolio and for that you have to inculcate Another thing that you will be doing when we are drawing uh, using these sheets is we are not touching the sheet often. So since it is a huge board, since it's a big board and the sheet is also going to be big, so every time, every time I have to draw my hand should actually be resting on this butter paper so this butter paper should be the one where my hand should rest if i'm drawing on the top the butter paper will be pulled up if i'm drawing in the middle or bottom the butter paper will be pulled down and then i draw and once you've completed the drawing the butter paper will be pulled up to the entire sheet so that there is no smudging which is happening on this on this sheet and you just roll these sheets and how do you stack and store your sheets that's another thing so there are sheet holders which are available you can you can procure a sheet holder or you could also keep your sheets absolutely flat so you can place them between sheets of newspapers place the sheets flat and store it maybe under the bed or somewhere where they remain flat but they do not get smudged by anything one more tape which I forgot to mention is this uh, thick tape, brown tape which we will need to cover the board. So the board if you see and this is a brown sheet by the way this is not the surface of board. So we will also be needing a thick brown paper. So if you look at the board, the board will actually have a texture a wooden texture. So there are scales which are coming and if you move your head so if you uh, if we do not cover our board with the help of some cushioning which is made of newspaper and covered with this brown board if you move your pencil horizontally because of the scales coming your pencil will move it will not be a straight line to avoid that we actually add a lot of cushioning on the board which is of newspaper and then on top of that we place this board this uh, brown paper and then we pack it properly before actually going on and uh, starting to draw. So this was all about your different stationary material and instruments that I had to tell you about. I hope for the next lecture you would have procured all the stationary materials and all these instruments and tools and uh, you will be ready to start with your drawing exercises. If uh, you are planning to buy a board uh, depending upon what is the requirement you can also buy a small board and work with the, a mini drafter instead of buying a huge big board and with the help of a tea pulley uh, depends upon which course you are enrolled in and what is the requirement of your course but either one of these works equally good there is no limitation the only thing is with a small board and a small sheet you cannot make very big big drawings while if you want to make bigger drawings if you want to use full sheets 
you will have to go for a big board and uh, a T pulley and you know related instruments. So now we have seen what all instruments, tools and stationary items will be needed and I am hoping that you will try your hands at each of these uh, instruments and tools before we come for the next class. So uh, please procure all these stationary items and these instruments and tools before you actually work um, by yourself on a sheet and a board uh, starting with lecture 3. So, uh, the list of all these instruments and stationary items has already been shared in the uh, script for the lecture and that is available on the website. Kindly have a look at that uh, list and procure all the stationary items. So, you should be able to draw simultaneously as we uh, as you hear the lecture as this lecture is seen by you. So, uh, with that hope we will meet for the next lecture, lecture 3. Till then, have a good day. Bye-bye.